okay hi everyone I'm here with another video I'm super excited to show you guys how I do my ombre um, ombre is one of my favorite things to do so I'm happy to be sitting down and talking you guys through the way that I make sure that my ombre is perfectly blended so if you want to see how I do my ombre then please keep watching this video um, first thing I always do when I am doing a acrylic full set is I always make sure I prep my nails I feel like that's very important um, I never ever start a set without making sure that my that the nails are fully prepped um, so first thing you saw me do was I push the cuticles back and when you push the cuticles back that allows you to do this step here which is to make sure you're using that drill bit and drilling around the cuticle area very important step I I think that this might be one of the most important steps when it comes to prepping for me um, I just think it makes the set look really, really nice at the end. Um, also, this drill bit here it will be used to remove the shine. And I'm thinking about doing a video for you guys where I'm explaining all the drill bits that I use because I know sometimes the electric file can look a little bit scary because it is a file at the end of the day. So, um, But it is very helpful in a lot of ways. So I, I plan on getting you guys a video for that really, really soon. Um, now I'm going to be adding some tips. These are my favorite tips I got. I get them from Amazon, and they just—I like the way that they are already shaped. They're pretty straight, and I don't really like nails that kind of curve downward. So these are like the perfect nails for me. Um, make sure you guys are measuring this, or making sure you're using the right size tip for the nail. You don't want the tips to be too big or too small because then the nails will more than likely come off so I always make sure I'm looking at the side walls of the nail and I'm just matching it up and lining it up with that um, and then yeah I'm using this glue I don't know if I said this already I'm using this glue I got from Sally's and then uh, tips Amazon I got them for like seven dollars and they're like the best that I've used so far uh, now I'm going to be cutting the tips and I decided to go kind of long here um, I think sometimes long nails are so cute when it's just a like a plain ombre um, now if I tend like if my nails are like doing a lot if it's like really busy and I have like crystals and glitter and all that stuff then I sometimes won't go as long because I don't want it to look too crazy but with ombre I really do like a good long ombre nail so that's why I decided to keep some length for these nails. Okay, so now I'm going to be taking you guys through my actual acrylic process. Um, I want to be as I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible because I know sometimes people look at ombre and they think like oh my gosh it's so hard to do but it's really not. I think ombre it's pretty, it can be pretty simple um, if you just follow some steps. So I'm going to try my best to kind of give you guys a step by step process of how I do my ombre. Um, first thing is I always pick up a bead and I place it where the natural nail and the tip meat um, if you don't know what I mean by that it just basically means like where I where I have the tip place on the nail so that's more than, than likely always going to be somewhere towards the middle of the nail I always pick my bead up and I place it there first um, and, and I just add as I think I need more acrylic so I pick up a bead I kind of play with it kind of maneuver it maneuver the product play with the product so I can get where I want it to go and then I press down towards the tip and then I brush the extra product off of the brush onto the paper towel. Um, you have to make sure that you are wiping your brush on the paper towel because you can't have the acrylic state on the brush and then try to repeat that whole process over again. Um, then it's just going to make it more difficult for you. Your acrylic is not going to lay as nicely and you'll have to do more filing in the long run. So again, I'm going to start fresh here for this new nail. I pick up a bead, place it right there where the natural nail and the tip meet. Um, you can start more toward the end of the tip if you want. That's just where I place mine at. 
Um, and then I just kind of press, maneuver the product, clear with the product, and then brush down toward the tip, wipe the brush on the paper towel. Then I pick up another bead, place it maybe a little bit higher than where I placed that first one. The same thing, I'm maneuvering it, I'm playing with it, and I'm brushing and wiping the rest on the paper towel. Very important, I always make sure that I am cleaning my side walls. I always take the flat side of my brush and just kind of make sure that I'm keeping the shape because I don't like to reshape at the end. I, I, I do go in and clean the shape, but I don't like to kind of reshape all over again. So I always make sure that I am keeping my side walls nice and clean. Um, but yeah. Uh, also with this product, I had to keep my brush uh, fairly wet. Um, and I think that that also comes when you work with different products. You'll see like, um, oh, for this product, I have to keep my brush a little bit wet. Or for this product, I have to keep my brush more on the dry side. You'll see that as you use um, different brands and different products. Um, so yeah, this is one of the ones that I had to keep my brush a little bit wet. It was um, a little bit different. I do like the color though, so um, it was nice. But yeah, um, again, I'm just picking up product, I'm picking up that green color, and I'm just kind of placing it where I think I need it to go. And I'm just, again, keeping those side walls clean. Um, uh, so then again, also I want to touch on this. Where you are going to place your new color, you do want to kind of blend that green out a little bit. You don't want to keep the line harsh, um, especially if you are using a really light color like I'm doing here today. So as you can see, like where that at the cuticle where that green is it's not really that harsh it's kind of like faded a little bit and you can just do that with your brush it's not really a special thing you have to do um, yeah so again on this middle finger I am picking up a bead I placed it in the middle where the natural nail and the tip meet and I'm just moving the product where I think it should go um, keeping those side walls clean and then I'm going to just repeat the process until I feel like I have enough of that green color on the nail.
okay so we're i'm just about done with the green color um i i this is when i kind of fell in love with this set um i don't typically go for green colors which is so weird because i really really ended up liking this ombre um i don't know if it's because of the new color color that i use with it but this is by far one of my favorite sets um so yeah i finished with the green color now it's time for the i think this is like the best part of ombre like the most fun step um so i'm taking that butterlicious color by valentino and i pick up a bead the bead does not have to be big because we are working with the pinky nail um and it just doesn't require as much product so i pick up that bead and i kind of place it right where that green is right on top of it and i do the same thing i do with the green color i just kind of move move it around play with it and then brush it towards the nail um really i think that this is where that the ombre kind of happens by itself um you really create the ombre just by brushing that product down toward the nail and you can pick up as much as you want if you just brush it and kind of um it'll kind of blend itself really so since I placed a lot of that green down, I don't really need to use a lot of the nude color. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to use a one more bead here. I think. Hold on, let me see. Okay, no. I'm going to the next nail. So, pick up that bead. And you can see I kind of place it right where that green is. Right on top. And I just kind of brush it down. Fan it down so that it looks blended. Um... And then really right there, your ombre is already complete. Uh, and then I pick up another bead, place it on top of the other one. Press it where I want to go and then I also do the same thing. I just move the new color down. Um, I I think this is probably, I don't know, it's really weird. Let me know, tell me in the comments what you think the hardest part about ombre is. Because I'm really curious to know um, what you guys think the hardest part is. I think that... You guys will probably say the blending part but I don't know I just think that if you I think the blending kind of happens by itself if you just brush the product down toward that tip of the nail you know um, but yeah I don't know anyway again I'm just using this color it's a really light color I think that this looks really good this ombre looks really good for spring um, because it's not really like a dark nude like the, the nude is, is not too brown it's like a white almost the color is like a white which I really like that um, I honestly would have done this sooner but I didn't think that the, that color would even color would even cover the green or any color so I hope that did not sound confusing I'm trying to say that this is a light nude color so I did not think that it would cover a green or a pink or an orange um, but it does it does work and it is blended so I think I actually prefer this ombre color than using like a dark nude color which is weird to really say that but anyway <laughs> um, so yeah I'm just pa placing that color where I think I need it and just making sure I brush down and then your ombre is already really complete um, we will have to go in with a clear and it doesn't have to be a lot you're really just adding the clear to protect your work really so I'll let this play and then I'll come back when it's time to add the clear
Okay, so here's where I was saying that we have to add some clear to protect our work that we've just done. Um, I'm taking this Mia Secret Clear. I love this clear. This is all I really have been using. So um, you don't have to, you don't have to use a lot of clear. I used to think that I had to use like a whole bunch for that my um, ombre would foul away when it was time for me to reshape, but that is not true. You don't have to use as much clear as you think. You just really have to use enough to put a thin layer to protect the colors that you got, that, that you use to ombre. So here I'm placing it again with the natural on the tip meat and I just brush it down and again keep my flat walls clean because clear, I mean, it's it can be a little bit runny, I guess. So just make sure you're keeping your side walls clean and I add that second bead like right above it and I kind of just place it, push it back towards the cuticle but then also make sure I still brush down and brush my brush on the paper towel. So I'm doing this for all of the nails and then it'll be time to do some reshaping. You're going to want to wait for your nails to dry for at least three minutes. Um, the way I know my nails are dry is if I use my brush or a file, if I tap the nail with the file, if it's like a clack or like a click sound, you'll know that it's dry. If you can't hear it as you're tapping it, then you have to wait a little, bi little while before you start to file. Okay, so my nails are nice and dry. Um, now it's time to go back in and reshape the nail. Um, I always make sure I start with the side walls first and I just kind of get my shape as sharp as I can. And then I also take my hand file and I kind of go across the nail to make sure my nail is nice and smooth. There's no lumps and bumps. Um, now you don't have to, I used to worry about this step because I'm like, oh, I don't want to take off my ombre. I don't want to mess up the blend. But that is the purpose of the clear acrylic that we put down um, so you should be fine your work won't fall away you shouldn't even be getting cl close to that ombre unless you're really 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 fouling for days um, sorry having a little malfunction here with the camera um, but yeah you should be okay if you added your clear acrylic then your ombre blend should not foul all um, so yeah, I'm going to go in and make sure I reshape all of my nails so that they're nice and sharp. And then, instead of using a, a drill for this set, I decided to use like a, um, a bluffing block. And that, um, got rid of the scratches and stuff that I, that were there from the reshaping. And then I added some clear top coat. And yeah, we'll be pretty much finished at that point. So I'll let you guys watch the fouling here. Um, again, I always make sure I am starting with those side walls. Try to align where her natural side walls are. Um, shaping with the acrylic one is really tough. It can be probably one of the toughest steps of doing nails um, because the acrylic is dry now it's hard so it can be a little bit tougher to shape but just make sure you are like I said I always say look at the side walls because that really really does help me and yeah just make sure you're using your foul to get the, the nails nice and smooth and yeah I'll be ready for, we'll be ready for some clear top coat
So now it's time for me to add some gel clear top coat. This is a non-wipe top coat. So once you add it and you cure the nails, I cure my nails for about two minutes, sometimes more. Um, well, really not even more, maybe like two to three minutes. And then once you take it out, you're good to go. You don't have to like wipe with alcohol or anything and the nails will keep it shine. So I definitely say um, get a, or try to use a non-wipe top coat. It's kind of like a game changer really. Um, Cause there's no need, to, no need to now use alcohol to wipe after a top coat anymore. So yeah, we're pretty much finished at this point. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I tr I'm really trying to be as in depth as possible. Um, I do want to do a video, maybe I'll make my next video a sit down and talk through with you guys. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to set my camera up so that way I can talk to you guys and then you guys can also see what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, and then I can be like way more in detail, I can probably really explain, explain my process to you guys a lot better. But yeah, um, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and leave me some comments i want to know what you guys think about ombre and i want to know what you guys think the hardest part about ombre is so thank you for watching and i will hopefully see you guys face to face or face to camera in my next video